माननीय सभा सदों माननीय अध्यक्ष जी मान्य सदस्यगण नियम थ्री से उनसे उनके अधीन मामलों को सभा पटल पर रखने की अनुमति दी जाती है मैं सभी मान्य सदस्यों से आग्रह करूंगा कि वह थ्री से उनसे उनके मामले सभा पटल पर रखें अध्यक्ष जी आज सत्रह नंबर आइटम भी लगा हुआ है द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शुल्क का ट्राइब ऑर्डर अमेंडमेंट बिल टू जीरो ट्वेंटी टू और अठारह नंबर पे एन के प्रेमचंद्रन जी का और मनीष तिवारी जी का टू रेज ए डिस्कशन ऑन सिचुएशन इन यूक्रेन ये काफी इंपोर्टेंट है मैं अनुरोध करूंगा कि पहले इसको ले लिया जाए और इसके बाद बिल पास करने का हाँ पहले यूक्रेन लेंगे उसके बाद आज बिल भी पास ठीक है ये अनुरोध करने के लिए मैं कटा धन्यवाद पहले यूक्रेन यूक्रेन के बाद बिल लेंगे पर बिल भी आज ही पारित कराएंगे जीरो ओवर ले लिया सुबह जीरो ओवर खत्म हल्ला करोगे तो जीरो ओवर नहीं मिलेगा आइटम नंबर 18 यूक्रेन की स्थिति पर नियम थ्री वन नाइन थ्री के अधीन चर्चा श्री एन के प्रेमचंदन जी थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑनरेबल स्पीकर सर सर आई एम एक्सट्रीमली थैंकफुल टू द ऑनरेबल स्पीकर फॉर अलोइंग मी टू इनिशिएट द डिस्कशन ऑन यूक्रेन क्राइसिस under rule 193 of the rules of procedure and conduct of business in lok sabha sir for last more than 2 years the world is grappling with a scourge of unimaginable magnitude the covid-19 pandemic this once in a century global pandemic has devastated the lives livelihoods economics health social security education and almost all consumable human endeavors while the pandemic still shows no sign of abating the world is face to face with another catastrophe of almost equal magnitude sir the simmering discontent on various issues between ukraine and russian federation erupted into a war when the russian federation declared a special military operation in ukraine on 24th of february 2022 sir the honorable external affairs minister sri jay shankar ji has placed a statement before the lok sabha on march 15 2022 in which it's a lengthy statement of the honorable minister i fully welcome and appreciate the statement on behalf of government of india placed before this house so the lengthy statement which is having 27 paragraphs out of the 27 paragraphs of the statement of the honorable minister 24 paragraphs are pertaining to the operation ganga mission carried out by the government of india in bringing back indian citizens stranded indian citizens and the students from ukraine sir after 40 days of declaration of military operation in ukraine by vladimir putin things have unraveled to a reasonable degree of cat catastrophe dimensions of the conflagration sir so the discussion under rule 193 at this juncture is highly inevitable and it is highly required to have a prompt response from the government of india relating to the current geopolitical impact due to the war so it is the right time by which we are discussing about the ukraine crisis so as to have the house will be getting a immediate and prompt response from the government of india what is the current geopolitical impact and what is the stand of india's position in respect of the ukraine crisis so once again i take this opportunity to congratulate and express my sincere thanks to the honorable speaker for admitting this motion under rule 193 and giving an opportunity to initiate this discussion sir before entering into the basic issue of ukraine crisis i would like to say a few words about the operation ganga mission carried out by the government of india under the leadership of ministry of external affairs sir i fully associate with the foreign minister statement in para 26 of the statement commending the efforts of government of india the officials of ministry of external affairs particularly the concerned embassies ministry of civil aviation ministry of defense ndrf indian air force private airlines and all those who have 
worked tirelessly and selflessly, worked for the safe return of the Indian nationals from Ukraine. Sir, I do admit the fact that the government did a good job in bringing more than 20,000 people back to India. I would like to place it on record the good thing the government has done. Sir, but at the same time, I am making an appreciation on record. I would like to make some critical observations regarding the Operation Ganga mission carried out by the government of India. Sir, the first critical observation is, number one, the evacuation program could have been better if early courtship steps were taken to commence the operation as other countries have done. Sir, for example, the first advisory of the Ministry of External Affairs issued on 15th February. Sir, the advisory lacks clarity and direction. That is, the first advisory of Ministry of External Affairs and the embassies in Ukraine regarding the crisis, it was lacking clarity and it was lacking direction. Sir, what was the first advisory says? I quote, Sir, in view of the uncertainties of the current situation in Ukraine, Indian nationals in Ukraine, particularly students who stay, is not essential, may consider leave temporarily. Sir, unquote. That means in view of the uncertainties of the current situation in Ukraine, Indian nationals in Ukraine, particularly the students who stay, is not essential, may consider leave temporarily. This was the first advisory issued by the Ministry of External Affairs on 15th February. Sir, you may kindly see the advisory issued by the United States of America on 11th February 2022, in which it is a specific direction has been given that American citizen not to travel to Ukraine and asking those who are in Ukraine to leave immediately. Sir, the U.S. advisory was very explicit and clear direction has been given. I would like to quote the U.S. advisory also. Sir, I quote, we want to be crystal clear on this point. Any American in Ukraine should leave as soon as possible and in any event in the next 24 to 48 hours. Unquote. This was the advisory issued by the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. ME officials. Sir, similarly on 12th and 13th February, New Zealand and Australia issued advisories asking their citizens to leave immediately as did many other countries such as Britain, Japan, Norway, etc. Sir, non-essential citizen may consider leave temporarily is the direction given by the government of India, given by the Ministry of External Affairs. To, according to me, this is a strategic flaw on our part in the, in, in the evacuation process by name which we call Operation Ganga. So the hardships which you have mentioned in the statement, detailed explanation is there. The hardship the government of India has faced in evacuating on bringing back the people from people of India, standard people of India from Ukraine is absolutely correct and I do accept the fact it could have been avoided. That miseries could have been avoided or averted if we had acted as other countries have done. This is the first strategic flaw which I would like to point out. Sir, the second one is another strategic flaw in the Operation Ganga mission is that priority should have been given to evacuate the students from Bangas in Sumi, Kharkiv and Kiev instead of those in Western Ukraine where, was, where there was no conflict or fighting. Sir, you may kindly see over 600 students are trapped in Sumi over 12 days in the midst of bombing without food or water. The feedback from the students and majority of the evacuees is that the government came into the scene only after, the, after they have crossed the borders. Sir, within Ukraine, they were mostly at the mercy of the persons called the contractors in their language. So, sir, when we take pride and credit in the evacuation of more than 20,000 people back to India, we have to introspect ourselves that whether we have acted promptly in time, that has to be introspected by ourselves for which a critical analysis is required. That is the second drawback or second strategic flaw on the part of our side in evacuation process. Sir, with these students back to India, now the government's priority should be how to recoup the loss to thousands of these students. Sir, I would like to request the Honorable Health Minister to resolve the matter of students as soon as possible in, in the interest of their young, in the interest of these young citizens because they are in big trouble. The issue of the students who have already returned from Ukraine, most of them are medical graduate students. Their issue has to be dealt with and it needs to be resolved. I think that the government of India should take 
initiative in resolving their issue with National Medical Commission, the Health and Family Welfare Ministry has to take the initiative. And further, sir, I, 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 it would be unfair on my part if I do not mention the name of Naveen Shagarapa, sir, who tragically lost his life at such a young age in Ukraine due to injuries sustained due to the shelling. Sir, his parents donated his body for medical research, overcoming their irreparable loss should remain a lesson for all of us and by bow in reverence to these parents because they have done a wonderful thing and that loss has to be mentioned here. So I salute the parents for the wonderful thing which they have done. Sir, the next point, this is regarding the Operation Ganga mission carried out by the government of India, critical analysis definitely is required at the, at the, time, at the time when we appreciate the earnest efforts taken by the government of India, critical evaluation of the program is highly essential so as to have a lesson in the future programs. So definitely such an evaluation would come. I hope that it would come from the Honorable, Honorable External Affairs Minister, the Foreign Minister. So now coming to the second point which I would like to make under 193 discussion is the diplomatic stand of India in the current crisis. Sir, I know it very well that it is a tricky position. Sir, analysts and experts were initially of the opinion factoring in only the relative size and strength of the two warring parties. Sir, but the situation is drastically changed after 40 days. Sir, Ukraine is not the only casualty in this war. Ukraine and Russian Federation have four edges between being granaries of several nations in Asia, Europe and Africa. Sir, the war has disrupted the supply chains and created conditions of acute shortage and severe inflation and hunger. Sir, the ongoing war, in fact, has worsened the situation already under severe stress due to the damage caused to the lives and livelihoods due to the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. Sir, the special military operation by the Russian Federation on a sovereign nation has brought swift retaliation from the Western nations supporting Ukraine. Sir, there has been a flurry of economic and trade sanctions against the Russian Federation, which are severest since the World War II, which happened more than 80 years ago. Sir, the geopolitics has literally polarized with the collective stance of NATO with the West and Russia with its supports mainly from the East. Such a polarization has already come into place. Sir, at this juncture, India's political stand in this issue is of paramount importance and significance. Sir, our Foreign Minister Sri Jayasankar Ji had reiterated our stand on Ukraine conflict as, I quote, steadfast and consistent and he stood for peace. I fully agree, I, unquote, I fully agree and I appreciate the stand taken by the government of India in the Ukraine crisis. Whereas the US President Mr. Joe Biden has criticized India's position or India's stand as shaking. And sir, even the recent days, the, the countries belonging to the West, they have even cautioned India about the attempts to circumvent the financial sanction which they have put in, Rus in the Russian Federation. That caution has also been given from the West that has to be taken very seriously. Sir, this could be attributed, this caution, I'm not using the word warning, maybe the caution given by the West, even during there with so many eminent personalities have already visited our country and there are all these eminent, eminent uh, foreign, foreign officials who are here in Delhi, our national capital, and also indirectly it is a warning or cautioning government of India if you are circumventing the financial sanctions put in on Russian Federation. Maybe because of the three reasons, number one, sir. Sir, in early November 2020, India voted against Ukraine. Ukraine sponsored a resolution in the human rights violation in Crimea. That is the controversial place. And number two, India's abstention from voting in the UN Security Council and UN General Assembly in the Ukraine issue, which might have abstracted the anti-Russian camp and we have seen to be projected as a supporter of the aggressor and losing our democratic credentials. That may be the second reason. And the third one is, sir, the India statement at the United Nations lacked the condemnation of the Russian attack on Ukraine, which the President Vladimir Putin called as a special military operation. These might be the reasons by which this observation has come from the West. Definitely that has to be cleared. Sir, it is a very interesting geopolitical situation prevailing now in the world. 
I think this is my common parlance. I'm not an external affairs expert or a foreign affairs expert, but to a common man, I would like to think. It's a very interesting position of present geopolitical situation. So number one is, the 36% of the world population lives in countries that have actually condemned the Russian and support of the sanctions on the Russian economy, such as US, those are in the Euro European Union, as well as UK, Japan, Australia, and Canada, number one. And number two, whereas nearly one third of the world's other population lives in a country that remains neutral so far, led by India, Brazil, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, South Africa, and UAE, this is the second part. And the third portion is 32% of the world's population live in country that supports Russia's action. So this is why India's diplomatic stand is of paramount significance that has to be taken in a careful, cautious manner. So the countries in the East, starting from the top to bottom, if you examine Russia, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, they have abstained from the voting in the UN Security Council as well as the UN General Assembly. Sir, so I would like to pose a specific question or a specific clarification to the Honorable Foreign Minister Sri Jay Sangharji, because as an academic, for the academic sake, I would like to know from the Honorable Minister whether this pattern is resulting in the formulation of a neo-geopolitical consensus in the West and the East, whether such a culmination or the formulation is being taking place in the world beyond all the political differences, strategic political differences, such a formulation is being coming into the existence. I would like to seek the clarification from the Honorable Minister and also would like to know the political stand in this respect as far as India is concerned. Sir, coming to the India and Russia relations, sir, India has a long-standing relationship with Russia, with the st both strategic and political. Sir, 60 to 70 percent of India's military hardware is of Russia origin. Not only that, India-Russia military technical cooperation has evolved from a buyer-seller framework to one involving in joint research, development, and production of advanced technologies and systems. This is extremely crucial, sir. This is extremely crucial at a time when India has an ongoing border standoff with China. Sir, in the early years, USSR, as well as Russia, has used their veto power in UN Security Council six times. Sir, in the year 1957, over the Kashmir issue, when at the, at the then leader of Soviet Union, Khrushchev, has said Moscow was just across the border, and in case of any trouble in Kashmir, Delhi should just give a shout to the USSR. That was in the year 1957. Sir, in 1961, as per the report of Khrushchev, they sent a telegram to the former Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehruji, in which he said that, India's action to do away with the outpost of colonialism in its territory is absolutely lawful and justified. And, sir, in 1962, where Russian vetoed the Irish resolution in the UN Security Council, urging India and Pakistan to directly negotiate in the Kashmir issue. Sir, in the year 1971, it is very interesting, the Russia, USSR has thrice had exercised that veto power in favor of India. And that too, to ensure that the issue remains a bilateral one, instead of becoming a global concern and attracting the Indian friends of the third party nations. And two, that the UN could not pass a resolution in favor of ceasefire between India and Pakistan. This is the stand taken by USSR during 90, from, since 1957 until this time. So, sir, my point is, thus Russia has proven itself to be a trustworthy strategic partner of India and time-tested ally. This is my observation in respect of our relation with Russia. Sir, coming to the economic impact of the, impact of the crisis, sir, on a macroeconomic study, it can be seen that the economic repercussions in this crisis is manifold, which one of them is direct repercussion that stems from this is of the elevated oil prices. Sir, Russia is the world's third largest producer and export, exporter of oil after U.S. and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia meeting 10% of the global demand. Sir, in the early days of the crisis, the price, I'm not going to the details, sir. Sir, this crisis will also overthrow out of culture the macroeconomic assumptions on which projections in budget 2022-2023 and the economic surveys are based. So, definitely the economic 
economic impact has to be taken very seriously. Sir, currently we are seeing an increase of $30 rise in the crude oil. So the rise in the crude oil price poses inflation, fiscal and external sector risk. Sir, if the war is to continue and the sanction to sustain may lead to a major global economic crisis, and that too after the COVID-19 pandemic, where the economies are still suffering from. Sir, in such a situation, what is the step to be taken by our government at this juncture? Sir, my suggestion is, and my point is, history has proven that war has never been, nor shall it ever be a resolution for anything. Coming from the land of Gandhiji and Subhash Chandra Bose, we have always been able to find a balance between Himsa and Ahimsa. So I propose that we should take this as our diplomatic stand and India should take the initiative in mediation to resolve the dispute to restore the peace. Sir, within two minutes I will finish. Sir, the recent meeting held between the Honorable Prime Minister of India and the Foreign Minister of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, where Sergei Lavrov has underlined that India has an independent foreign policy not under the influence of US indicated that if India was to play the role of a mediator on, in the case of Ukraine, then it can support such a process and no one will be against it. Sir, the same was expressed from the Ukrainian counterpart even at the early stages of the crisis. Sir, to me, sir, to me, it seems a good opportunity for India to play a substantial role in the ongoing, ongoing stalemate. I am reminded of the good old golden days of NAM, non-alignment movement, and the leadership role played by India during the crisis in the former days. Sir, we have been all along professing the principle of Vasudeva Kudumbagam in our practice and belief. India should therefore impress upon all proactively, impress upon all countries proactively that the world cannot afford this man-made catastrophe at a time when it is still to recover from the trials and tribulations of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, sir, it is time when all nations are taking sides that India should take the initiative to resolve the conflict as an honest mediator. Sir, I am sure that India enjoys that stature and goodwill with all concerns. With these words, I conclude. Thank you very much, sir.